Hey team, Patrick here, and in today's lesson, we're going to cover my top tips to improve your receiving skills. We can then look to turn these good receiving skills into good sending skills, and that's a simple message I try and instill in the players that I'm coaching. We'll focus on the cycle of how we set up and prepare for the shot, our movement to the ball, the contact and our recovery back after we've hit the shot. And it's really important that we follow this sequence every time we hit the ball. So let's get into it. It's important to know that time is very precious in tennis. We can't stop time, we can't slow down time. So we want to use this time while the ball is in the air to read the ball and react. And we don't want to come alive on the bounce of the ball as it's then too late. And this starts even before our opponent hits. We want to make sure our eyes are looking down the court and we're picking up on these cues that they might be giving us about what shot they might hit. We want to set up and move with a lot of intensity, do what I call the hard work while the ball is in flight and the bounce of the ball then becomes this moment of truth did we set up to beat the bounce of the ball? So what is the optimum setup position to be in to execute our strokes? Well, it's going to be to be in position where you can play whatever shot you want to hit and not be dictated to by the ball where, for example, we're late with our contact or our poor positioning where I can only hit cross core or I can only pop the ball up. Our setup and position will change based on what shot we're trying to hit and particularly the better we get, the more I say, well, it depends in terms of what stance or what grip or what footwork we're going to use. But generally, we want to be in a position where we can transfer our weight and rotate into the ball. So we want to be in a position where we're coiled to the side, we're behind the ball, and we're on balance. So we want to think about our contact in three ways. Our distance laterally from the ball, and we don't want to be too close or too far away. We want to be in a comfortable range of motion from the ball where we're not going to miss hit the ball. The height of the contact, and generally we want to be hitting the ball somewhere between our waist and our shoulder, and back to forwards. We want to be just out in front with our contact, with our body rotated behind the ball, where our body is stabilizing the racket head. We also want to think about the timing of when we play the ball off the bounce. And when we get more advanced, we can look to sometimes hit on the, on the rise or at the top of the bounce to take time 
away from our opponent. But for recreational players, generally I recommend we hit the ball just as it begins to drop. This is going to give us a little bit more time. The ball is going to be a little bit lower around our waist and players feel more comfortable hitting it here than a higher ball. And also, it's going to be traveling at its slowest point. If I try and hit the ball on the rise, the ball's still got a lot of energy and the timing is more difficult. So most players could benefit from staying more behind the ball, particularly beginners tend to run into the ball and give themselves no time and no space. And even the best players will often be hitting just as the ball begins to drop if they're on or behind the baseline. And then the recovery back after our shot. And this is what a lot of players neglect. But I like to say the shot doesn't finish here and not until we're back in an appropriate position, in a ready position, ready for the next ball. As if we don't recover well, it's going to affect our ability to receive the next shot. As like I said, it's a cycle. And we're either going to recover to a similar position on the court to where we've just come from. For example, if I receive a, a wide ball, or we're going to reposition to the net, for example, if we get a short ball and we're going to approach. I particularly see this lack of recovery in drills where players and coaches will either not include the recovery or will just walk back to the middle with no enthusiasm or intensity. But this is just poor practice as it doesn't replicate a point. And unless you're always hitting winners, we've got to be back in a great ready position, ready to react to the next ball. We could do lessons and lessons just on players receiving skills and being in a better position. This is what the pros do so well. Yes, they've got good hand skills, but often they don't need to use them as they're already set up correctly. This is definitely something we should be working on as beginner players as well. And you can even do it with throw and catch exercises where once you catch the ball, you can't move. You're going to throw it back and then you're going to recover and reposition. So you can do this if you can't rally. As always, thanks for checking out the video. Please leave it a, a like and a comment. We might have reached um, a thousand subscribers by the time this video comes out. So thank you so much for your support of the channel and I'll see you on court in the next one. Cheers guys.